questions concerning um, anything they've been going over? Any questions about anything that um, someone might have read, studied, researched? Well, uh, still talking about the uh, uh, talking about uh, we were talking about a, earlier day. Me and another brother were talking about a uh, brother called Ron March. I don't know if you heard of him or not. Yeah, I know brother Ron March. Yeah. Okay, I heard he uh, recently joined the Washita. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, he probably did, he, but um, he probably sounded like he might have joined Joe and them or somebody. Oh, them. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I heard he's, he's pretty good and a lot of the stuff we talk about in the law class. Right. Well, I was uh, uh, talking about a lot of other brothers before doing the... Uh, Authentication of the birth certificate, they need to deal with a lot with their nationality and birthright issues first. Mm -hmm. You know, um, uh, you know, a lot of like you were telling us last weekend, not last weekend, but last the last class that right. you know some brothers had had uh, tried to do their executive letters and um, found out they wasn't no good because they didn't uh, didn't do the authentication of the birth certificates. Right. And they had no papers, you know, so that kind of kind of left them in the dark. Uh -huh. That should be a good topic, you know, a good lesson, you know, to learn to learn from most of the sisters and brothers in the movement. Right. Well, there's so much disinformation out here, brother L, that it gets confusing, you know. And so that's what we see a lot of. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely got to authenticate mine. That's, what, that's why I'm getting one. Uh, you know, I already nationalized out there. Uh, yeah, that, <laughs> I'm glad I heard that in that last class because I wasn't about doing executive letter or anything, but, uh, you know, just getting to that part of the process. Right. Yeah, for me to know too. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> Doctor Lane. Yes. Um, the county, you know, they told me that I was gonna get my paperwork back in uh, in, in two weeks. Uh huh. So um, I've been looking in the mail every day. I haven't got it back from them yet. So what you think I should call them or what? Yeah, give them a call. Yeah, after two weeks, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll give them a call too. Doctor Allen. Yes. Yes, I was able to go to the social security office. Uh, with the change of name. Right. Um, so I had a little problem with the with the um the notary that paid. But apparently I didn't clip it on, it I didn't clip it together to the front page. But I took it back this morning and it was okay. The guy took it on uh, he said I'll get it back in two weeks. I'll get this the card in two weeks. But but my concern is um why is the the, the name still intact? Why is what still intact? That my new name intact. No, uh, because you haven't done nothing to the birth certificate. I beg your pardon? You have not done anything to the birth certificate. Oh, okay, okay. So it just is you don't mess with the birth certificate. Okay, so because I, I saw the printed out with the, the, the little caps, so I was just wondering. 
Well, it's temporary. Just continue using your indigenous appellation, and that's what's going to um, that's what's going to um, be used from here on out. The more you okay. use it, well, that's the name in which that that's going to be referred to you by. Okay. So when I get that that um, that card now, there'll be a new name on it. I could take. I would say I should take it down to the DMV. I, I didn't hear that last part. You. You say I should take when I get the card in the mail. I should take it to the DMV. Right. Mm-hmm. Along with the along with the change of name. Right. Did you get the form? Done? Did you get it back yet? The form. Yes, that I did. That I sent off. Yes, she got it. Yes, I got it. I, I was able to. That's I took it to the social security yeah. office. So just take that. Um. Right. So just take that and um. And um, the plane. Peace. Yeah, just take that and um, go to the um, DMV. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The, make sure you have your court order with you. Right. Make sure I have what? Court order. Court no. order. Not your court. Mm-hmm. Well, in your case, um, what I did. Make sure you have that paper that you um that that I sent you back. Oh. Yes. Okay. All right. So just take it with the card. Right. Okay. Oh, thanks. What about your election bill and all that? You can put that in your appellation name too, right? I can't hear you. Okay, what about like your electric bills and all that? You can put that in your appellation name too, right? Yes, if you choose to. Okay. I've, I've done it, you know. Uh, I had you know, some brothers tell me I. I, I shouldn't do it, you know, but, you know, I, I talked to Aleem about it. He said it was okay. Right, because you operate, you're going, you're going back and operating as a free man, a free woman in commerce. You don't, right. have a birth, you don't have a birth certificate under your indigenous appellation from them. Right. You know? So you can choose to do it that way or choose to continue doing it under the slave or government name because there is a bond attached to that name. Okay. Okay. So, but if you use, okay, if you use your, your, your birth certificate name, you can discharge that under that name, though, right? Yes, because that's what the birth certificate is attached to. Okay. So you, you want to keep it in that name, though, right? You can but it doesn't matter. You can't discharge that in your appellation name, can you? No, but your appellation name will be the authorized representative or secure party creditor um, over and for the slave or government name. Yeah, it would be the secure party creditor right. of, of the uh, government name. You know, I think that's how it works. All right, you you you'll be over the trust, right? Yeah, you'll be over the uh, uh, the, the the government name, you, especially if you had your uh, birth certificates authenticated. Okay. Go yeah, I think you as, uh, uh, Like my my name is Fahim with an L. I'm doing business as Robert Riley Herring. Which is my government name? Yeah. Is that am I correct on that, Doctor Aline? Yep. Okay. Can you repeat that again, fine? Yeah. Uh, uh, me and the brother Amir uh, Nasari Day, he will be talking today, and he was saying, telling me that uh, I can do uh, uh, my, my I'm, I'm Fahim with an L doing business as Robert Riley Herring. Right. You know, Robert Riley Herring is my government name. So, because me and another brother here in the St. Louis, Missouri Territory, we working closely together. 
on some of these issues, some of these things. Yep, right in his ass. Yeah, he's pretty, pretty, he's pretty good at that. So, so you you can't do none of that until you get your birth certificate authenticated, though, right? Well, we're getting ready to talk about that right now, so let me start. Can everybody see the screen? Yeah, I can see it. Okay, all right. Yes. All right, so this is the um, new process of authenticating a birth certificate. What it does is to make you the owner of the birth certificate trust, a master, not a mere trustee, a subject. All right, so... Um, the birth certificate is the primary document used to enslave us all. Not only does it grant the state the right to take our children whenever they want, it's registered as a security at the DTC, which is Depository Trust Company, and used by the government as a surety for public debt. In other words, they can tax the document into the to pay back federal debt. Under democracy, as long as we keep registering our children within the state, um, they have an endless supply of slaves to tax for the fiscal state. So the detail of this process are too involved to place here. But the point is that a major step to regain your freedom is basically to regain the birth title as opposed to birth certificate of title. So here. What follows is a painless, jail-free, non-confrontational, -conf um, lawful process that reclaims the status of hold in due course to the title to you, in all caps. All right, so laying the foundation. All right, so the key to this process in various states, of course, you have to look at your state um, law, in particular the state that you was um, conceived in or brought forth in. You know, but here we're going to say Minnesota. Um, let's look at Court Rule 220. In all other states I have examined, including Oklahoma, the laws in nature relating to the birth registration process are hidden. For the most part, of all you can find is a blurb or some. Um, Department of Vital Statistics webpage to the effects that the birth registration began in 1917. If you find a road map in the state, um, it should and does apply to all. So here is um, one of the road maps, once again, from Minnesota, Rule 220. Birth certificates. The registrar of title is authorized to conceive the registra registration of memorials upon any outstanding certificate of title. An official birth certificate pertaining to the register owner named and said, please um, meet your backgrounds, please. All right. Uh, register owner's name and said certificate of title showing the date of the birth of said registered owner Provided that an attached is said birth certificate, an affidavit of an um, of a fiant who state that he or she is familiar with the facts recited, stating that the party named in said birth certificate is the same party as of the owner's name in the said certificate of title, and thus thereof the register of title shall treat said register owner as having obtained the age of major majority as of the date 18 years after the date of the birth shown by said certificate. So what is this saying? Essentially, your birth certificate is a certificate of title, just like your car. You have the right to use the name, but the state has legal title and controlling interest in the property. You. All right, so um, we learn to associate this name with our physical self from kindergarten and on. You know, never realizing that we are just using the name that the state owns, just like your car. All right? You get to use it as long as you follow all the regulations and, of um, course, you know, pay tribute to the registered owner. Also, Rule 20, um, 220 implies that the state can.
that you have a child, no matter how old you are, until you have gone to the register and told them via affidavit that you are over 18. The state title, um, the state holds the title by mere assumption and the fact that you have never claimed it. Your mama gave it to them and you haven't gotten it back. So how can you get your title back without the big confrontation at the vital statistics? Well, looking at UCC 9-311A, UCC 9 deals with securities. We see that maybe there is a statute that could get us access to the original title without confrontation. Is UCC 9-311. It says perfection of security interests in property subject to certain statute regulations and treaties. Treaties. All right? And it says, except as authorized, uh, otherwise provided in subsection D, the following of the financing stat, um, statement, a lien is not necessary or effective to perfect a security interest in property subject to, one, a statute, regulation, or treaty of the United States, which regards for a treaty interest, or excuse me, security interests, obtaining prior, um, priority over the rights of a lien creditor with respect to a property preempt section 9310A. Two, this any statute covering automobiles, trail, um, trailers, mobile homes, boats, farm tr tractors, or the likes, which provides that a security invest, security in interest to be indicated on a certificate of title as a condition or result of perfection and any non-UCC um, code centric filing statute or three, a statute of another jurisdiction that provides for a security interest to be indicated on a certificate of title in the condition or resulting or resulted in the security interest obtaining priority over the rights of a lien creditor with respect to the property. We'll get into what all of that means in a second. All right, now look up Title 28, USC 1733. It says government records and papers, copies, properly authenticated copies and transcript of any books, records, papers, or documents of any department or agency of the United States shall be admitted into evidence equally with the originals thereof. Wow. If we can get our certificate of title properly authenticated, it is possible that we, um, that um, that it will be treated as equal to the original. Mm. That's what it just said. So let's find out. First, a word on authentication and certification. Authentication is used to verify the authenticity of the notary signature and thereby the authenticity of the document. For all states that have not signed on to the Hague Convention Treaty, certification and or certification and apostles do the same thing for countries, they are signatories to the Hague Treaty. County clerks may try to get you to settle for a certificate instead of authentication. But remember, we need properly authenticated copy. Right? That's what Title 28, U, um, United States 7, um, Code 1733 states. There is no list of what states are not Hague's signatures, but you can go to HTTP four colon right slash right slash www.hcch.net right slash index underscore n e s e n dot p h p and see the Hague website and click on non-member contact them. Repeat that again. Contracting states, contracting states on the left side menu. Um, click on the tiny map at the top of the page and download the map. And the gray areas are the ones that you're looking for. 
find the one that you like and verify that is not on either list of the country in both the nine member contracting states or the HCCH member states list. For example, Jamaica and Taiwan are not on either list. Pick one if you like um, for use on your federal DS-4194 form and give the clerk who wants to know the destination. All right? So um, when you're authenticating your birth certificate, um, that's what it's saying is that they'll ask you for that information based on the DS-4194 form. And you can get a copy of your of your um, certificate of live birth authentication or identity authenticated at each level of the government, county, if applicable, state, and federal. These are the same things that myself and Brother L told you the last class. Here's the step. Step one: get a certified copy of your certificate of live birth sometimes called the long form. This is not the same as a uncertified regular birth certificate. Some states have them at the county where you were born. Other states like Oklahoma keeps them at the state by the statistical office. You may go there in person or order them online from a company like Vital Check, www.vitalcheck.com. All right, that's V I T A L C H E K dot com. Step two. Next, go to the certified certi certificate of the live birth authenticated at every level of government. If you can get it from your county, then you want to get it authenticated by the county superior clerk of court um, or whatever option they have at the county level. Next, the Secretary of State handles authentication for the state. In Oklahoma, their office is in the first floor of the Capitol. Have them authenticate the certified certificate of live birth. They can attach a fancy page to the front with a brass um, ribbon, ribbon, All right, which is basically what Brother L was talking about. Um, a gold one and a red one that we was to, um, you heard um, talking about on um, the last class. Now, next, three. Next, go to the Department of State Office of Identification and download for somebody mute their background, please. Next, go to the Department of State Office of Identification and download form DS-4194 on the right side and fill it out with the non-Hague country of your choice. There may be cheaper ways, but I chose to prepay postage for a self-addressed return um, document mailed and enclosed in. A money order completed with the form DS-494 and a file certificate of live birth in the next size up um, document mailer and sent it off to the address on their website. You can go back um, a properly authenticated cert um, cert certificate of live birth like this. United States of America, Department of State, to all whom um, these presents shall come, greetings. I certify that the document here, here unto annex it is under the seal of the state of Oklahoma, of course, is this state, whatever state that you're in, and that such seals is or entitled to full faith and credit. For the content of the NX document, the department assumes no responsibility. This certificate is not valid if it is removed or altered in any way whatsoever. In testimony, whatever, uh, where are I, John um, F. Kerry, Secretary of State, that's United States Secretary of State, has hereunto caused the seal of the Department of State to be affixed, and my name is subscribed by the Assistant Authentication Officer of the said department um, at the city of Washington in the District of Columbia this 4th 
day of issue for swaying to um, chapter um, 15, no, 14, um, State of Blase Blah, John F. Um, John F. Curry, um, September 15, 1789, Blah, Blah, um, USC 2657, etc., etc. Um, USC Assistant Authenticated Application Officer 1433, Rule 44, Federal Rules of Department of State Civil Procedures. Um, notice the block of laws in the left, lower left corners of the document at the same back, including 28 UC, USC 1733. Um, you know, declaring the copies is equal to the original. You should look up the other laws reference as well. Um, now you can go to a register and attach an affidavit, sometimes like this, to the duly authenticated certificate of the live birth. Um, affidavit of ownership, state of, uh, county of, the good course re birth certificate, I, the undersigned of your indigenous appellation, um, doing business as the name in all caps and lawful age and being fully uh, first duly no, um, sworn or in our case affirmed. All right. Um, D plus. <coughs> and state that I am familiar with the facts we cited and the party's name in the said birth certificate is the same party as the owner name in the said certificate of title. Combination, right, well, as you see here, um, this a notary, the notary rule is sign it in that area. You'll put the certificate um, information, well, certificate of the title. You put your, um, once again, your birth name. Um, you'll see the notary. They'll sign that section right there. They're verifying that that's you. Now you can come down. The combination of a duly authenticated certificate of title and his attached claim is that what is known as a counter deed. From the perspective of the trust law, you now hold in your hand a deed to you. Once again, mm. from the prospect of trust law, you now hold in your hand a deed to you. From the perspective of commercial law, you hold a first in time, first in line document to you. In other words, you are now the real party in interest in holding in due course to the title to you. So what good is it? Well, correcting your status. For starters, it's a very cool looking document. <laughs> and it gets your feet wet navigating through various levels of government. Far more importantly, in every court case, the issue of standing, status, case, and controversy may be satisfied to move forward. Part of why we have a nanny state is that under the legal system that was set up, we are all seen as wars of the state. Our status as principal, all right, I'm not going to say citizen because that's not what it is, as principal, is not respected even if our house is paid off. We have a good job, money in the bank, and we're still seen as niggas. All right, that's essentially what's going on. Why? That's because somebody owns you. Now, during this process, you own yourself. So this process is a major step in stone in correcting the record of your status to principal, like before the 14th Amendment, as opposed to a citizen subject um, status of almost like everyone else walking around today. Since all crimes have been converted from common law crimes to commercial law, Title 27, um, CFR, 
72-11. Right? This document makes you the first in time, first in line, lien holder against your name. As you learn more of who you are in a legal and lawful sense, you will find that this is a powerful and useful document. Go through these legal definitions of Black's Law First Edition and you see preparation for reclaiming your title. As you read through them, you may begin to see the enormity of the crime perpetrated on the American people. Now, we look at birth. It says an act of being born on holy, bought, bought into separate existence. The act of being born or holy bought into separate existence. All right. Now, just listen to that. The act of being born or holy bought into separate existence. Mm. Mm. Two, delivery and conveyancing. The final and absolute transfer of a type of a deed properly executed to a grantee or to so, some person for his use in such manner that it cannot be recalled by the grantor. Huh? It was done so perfectly that the shit ain't called by the grantor? <laughs> y'all, y'all got to pay attention to what was just said. It says, a final and absolute transfer of a deed properly executed to the grantee or to the, some person for his use in such manner that it cannot be recalled by the grantor. Hmm. Indeed, indeed, so the, indeed. <laughs> so your mother delivered you in the delivery room and brought you to dock. And the docket is the birth certificate, as is the birth of a ship. And she doesn't even know that she was the grantor over this procedure and gave you as a war to the state. That's what this is saying. Hmm. She didn't even know. Because it was done so perfectly, it, it says, so properly executed. <laughs> Yes, no, was. so properly Freud. In medical jurisprudence, the act of a woman giving birth to her offspring. Livery. In English law, delivery of possession of the lands to the king's tenants in capite or tenants by knights' servants. A writ which may be sued out by a ward in chivalry on reaching his majority to obtain delivery of the possession of his land out of the hands of a guardian. So, it's you, delivery, this is what this does, this, this is the livery, not delivery, but livery is what you must do now, is to take the possession out of the hands of the guardian. They're the guardians. And now you must take it out their hands. And delivery is what? Under the night service. All right? But it's still trickery because they're still called tenants. And what is the tenant known today? Someone who pays rent. <laughs> They don't really own the land. Hmm. G, a steel instrument containing a contract or, con or um, conven convenient delivery by the party to be bound thereby and accepted by the party to whom the contract or conveyance runs. Convenience run. In a more restricted sense, a written agreement signed, sealed, and delivered by which one person conveys land, tenement, or hereditament to another. This is the ordinary moderate meaning. K, 
counter deed, a secret writing either before a notary or under a private seal, which destroys invalid or alters a public one. Uh oh. Uh oh. Let's look at that one again. A counter deed. A, counter deed. a secret writing. Either before a notary or under a private seal, which destroys invalids, invalids, or alters a public one. Okay. That's what the authentication process is doing of the birth certificate. Changing the status because it's countering the public one that they have done, but at the same time, so is you doing your nationality. Because mm. your nationality is what? It was a secret writing before a notary and under a private seal. So your nationality is actually so accounted. By definition, your nationality is, your affidavit of nationality and your documents are actually counter D. It's a counter D. Title. The word title certainly does not merely signifies the right which a person has to possession of property because there are many instances in which that a person who may have the right to possession of property and at the same time have no title to the same. In this ordinary legal acceptation, however, it generally seems to imply a right to possession also. It therefore appears on the whole to signify that outward evidence of the right rather than the mere right itself. Thus, what it is said that the most imperfect degree of title consists in a mere negative possession or actual occupation of an estate. It means that the mere conception of excuse me, circumstance of occupying the estate is the weakest species of evidence of the occupier right to such possession. There is much more about the title in the Black Star Dictionary. But if you notice, the title refers back to the estate. So the birth certificate is the estate. And so by authenticating it, you come back into what? Into control of the estate. Hmm. Question. Yes. Islam, brother, brother Cash. Yeah. For the uh, for for commercial purposes, what now becomes the value of that estate after having authenticated the birth certificate? The the um, same value that is already is on the um, commercial law side, which is hundreds of millions of dollars. Did you say hundreds with an S? Yes. <laughs> okay, so there there is no some certain. You have to find out what that is, cause the fluctuation of it changes every day, cause it's on the stock market. I got you, I got you. So, as a follow up question, could one now then deposit that same authenticated birth certificate into a private bank account? You can, but. I wouldn't do so because you will want to have access in order to discharge debt based off the um, birth certificate in which that they still have in the stock market. If you take it and make it private, you know, then there's something else that might actually be going on with the one in which that is on the public side. And what we don't know about that is that this thing that would take place in the DTC, the Depository Trust Company, things that would take place at the Department of Vital Statistics and of Health, things that would take place at the um, United States Secretary of State Department, things that would take place at uh, a register of deeds at the county level in which that you was born. There's a lot of areas in which that would begin to 
um, have to fluctuate with some things in which that would um, happen from that process. You would have to actually withdraw, all right, or put okay. out in some shape, form, or fashion that you're pulling a loan from from off of um, off of the uh, stock market. If you were going to do that. Okay. But then if you did that, you know, you wouldn't have the process of being able to secure um, public debt. You'd be able to do it privately, but publicly um, there would still be a um, an issue going on. So the policy normally between the public side and the private side is actually the back of your Social Security card. That number at the bottom is the IMF number, which is called your um, International Monetary Fund number or the prepaid levy bond number. Mm -hmm. And that number is oftentimes used in order to gauge the bank in which that has um, utilized that trust, which is the Social Security card, because Social Security card is set to trust. <coughs> The birth certificate is called the set to trust, which is also the estate. So these particular numbers taps you into these particular um, accounts, which is all tied back to the Federal Reserve Bank and IMF. So mm -hmm. I mean, mastering it that way instead of doing anything with the birth certificate besides for outside of them getting it authenticated. And of course, here it is, authentication in the law of evidence, the act or mode of giving authority or legal authenticity to a statute, record, or written instrument, or a certified copy thereof, so as to render it legally admissible in evidence. An attestation may be a proper officer by which he certifies that a record is in due form of law, and that the person who certifies it is the officer appointed so to do. Mm -hmm. So once again, this puts you back into the estate. Um, so really, in that sense, you already took it from out of the public um, in, a, in a perspective and made it private. So now you can actually um, pay or pay what is called public debt, make the debt private, and, you know, pay it off paper for paper now. As mm -hmm. before, you will have to be extorted by a collection agency or some other method of agreement to pay off a debt in this amount of time. Otherwise, you know, you'll get, you know, $35 um, late fee, you know, from the bank or, or you'll get some type mm -hmm. of other problem, you know, um, coming forth, you know, so in a sense, you really is already making it private in this regard. You're turning things back onto the private side, so you don't really mm -hmm. have to do anything further in that regard, and I'll, and I'll keep, and I'll show you exactly more of what I'm talking about as I continue on. Mm -hmm. Okay, I appreciate that. Now, I was I was thinking since we have um, the possibility of accessing ten birth certificates uh, per lifetime, why not liquidate one of them, have liquid, you know, set aside to do some other things, and then as far as discharging is concerned, you can draw from one of the other nine birth certificates, you know, right. and well, then um, right. now, now now that is true. Remember, we did say that the birth certificate is also a negotiable instrument. So you yes, can sir. use the birth certificate as a form to discharge debt. So you can actually, if you have a large debt such as a mortgage or a student loan and that's hundreds, you know, or thousands of dollars, then you can actually use one of the birth certificates, attach it to it, showing that you have authenticated, that you're back in the executive order, um, office and that you can actually um, write a promissory note or 
a money order or a bond or bill of exchange based off of the amounts in which they may have given you and actually draw up the bond or etc. one of the other negotiable instruments and actually pay off that debt. You know, mm -hmm. and, and that is on the private side. Okay. So you are paying um, that debt off paper for paper, but it's not public, it's private. So when you so you will want to send forth the information that is private, so you will put private on the envelope in which that you're um, sending out, stamp private on there, get you a private, you can go and get a private um, stamp, you can get that from Staples, Office Max, Office Depot, etc. cetera, you know, Kinko FedEx, whatever, you know, um, just stamp okay. it on the envelope that is read in private and or confidential, you can get a confidential one or a private one, it's up to you, and Yes, you can discharge debt from the private side for a public matter. Okay, then. So with the bank scenario, then what I probably would be looking at is doing a bond, depositing the bond based on the authenticated birth certificate. So now the problem becomes, how does one make the bank, um, the, the, uh, the bank account a debt whereby it would warrant a bond for a sum certain where it can be deposited in discharging. You, you understand what I'm saying? How do we make the bank account a debt whereby it would warrant you do, the deposit you do, of this bond? You do, a, you do a 1099A and a 1099B. Thanks. Or, a 1090, or a 1099C with your IRS form. Okay. A 1099A okay. is for abandonment, 1099B right. is for balance, and a 1099C is for cancellation of debt. Hmm. So, if you're so going whatever the debt is. Right. If you're going to do a cancellation, okay. then you would use a 1099C and put in the amount of the um, cancellation or the debt in which that you right. attempted to cancel. cancel. Um, right. You also right. do a 1040 in R. I'm um, assuming not a 1040 okay. a 1040 voucher. You will also do a 1096, okay. um, and um, you will simply do these particular documents. Um, you can also do a um, an affidavit form 20, standard form 28, a 10, um, a um, a form 90, and a form 91 along with the UCC um, one financing statement. Okay. Make sure you have to, you're going to have to make sure you have the security, um, the security affidavits along with it, such as the whole homeless indemnity clause, the collateral listing, the private agreement, security agreement, you know, so these things have to be attached along with the also um, to help with the bond would be the affidavit called a bond for discharge of debt. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, these are the things that you would need. Also, a negative avertment. So, this okay. part would be the stuff that you would need. That's why we're going to continue going on, um, you know, as we continue on explaining this, this information. Um, a lot of this stuff that I'm okay. talking about will have to be shown in order to have an understanding or overstanding of the process and what these things look okay. like. So we're going to continue doing that. So um, we can't okay. jump, you know, from kindergarten to, um, you know, to um, grad school yet, you know. So, you okay. know, we, we're going to continue getting it, though. But right now, you I know, got the, you. Executive, the executive office um, is more important because this is what puts you back in position in order to even discharge debt properly. Okay. Now, in the alternative, would it be feasible to contact you for a private consultation? That way I can make sure I get this right. And, you know, your time is very valuable, and I, and I respect mm -hmm. that, and I just want to show the love in that regard. But no, but there's no need to because I'm teaching everything in class. Okay, brother. It's long. It's long. Yeah. Um, 
you can't get any more information out of me than what I'm already giving you in class. I'm going to give you everything that I know personally that I've done in some shape, form, or fashion, writs that I've done, um, cases that I've won. You know, I'm going to give you everything that I possibly can over these two months. You know, so, you know, just, just, just bear with us as we continue going through it. We had to go through the nationality for those three, um, three, four classes in order to make sure everybody, you know, is up to par on, you know, that we have a <coughs> connection this land and because of our connection to this land just give us a superior position as we are the Americans and not the United States citizens so we had to make that specifically clear so that with that understanding of the superiority of position of that's more so a rank not of importance you know but of rank in the sense that um, the corporation signed on to do business in America America never signed on to do business in the United States because mm -hmm. um, once again it's the United States of America America is not of the United States that means one has a superior position so um, mm -hmm. what you're doing is teaching you how to operate as an American even within their realm of the United States corporation and how mm -hmm. we taught you how to do that is by simply being able to utilize your indigenous appellation without having a birth certificate attached to it in their system mm -hmm. So we already gave you a superior position based on that fact alone. Mm. And that simply came by way of you declaring your nationality. And by declaring your nationality, you already is a step above the nonsense in which that they have attempted to continue perpetrating against you your whole entire life. For those that are happy with just being Negro, Black, and Colors, then they are fixed within that scheme within their judicial system, within their mind control, um, governmental, you know, um, spy agency, whatever the case is, this is where they are happy to be at. You know, so we done took this a little bit further. And so now that gives us the opportunity to come back now as head of the executor office. Now we understand that you, there's no substance, gold or silver, no longer backs the so-called fiat notes or money or, you know, all these things. This, this is a fraud, you know. Article 1, Section 10 states that there must be gold and silver coinage. Well, there is no gold, gold and silver coinage unless there's a special uh, anniversary you know, thing that the United States is throwing, throwing, you know, oh yes, we have one ounce bullion of silver for $11. You know, call us at 915 and, you know, that, that's what they do. So they have it maybe once in a while, annually, or whatever cases, you might see it in a magazine, you know, um, but as far as them, you know, you just having access, you know, is not like that any longer. But that's how it was before 1933. So, praying to D. Lionel Roosevelt, who, what is referred to as the great, uh, the New Deal, all right? And that New Deal is where we now have the House Joint Resolution, um, Revolu uh, Resolution 192, which is dealing with... Um, I was being able to do now paper for paper, at least for the time being. Now, there's an individual by the name of Dr. Hendo Henderson um, who states that he has what is referred to as the Melchizedek Trust and um, the Esther Trust. And these particular trusts now put everything, instead of up on a 501c3, up on a 501c4. I wish that takes it out from out of the hands now of the Vatican and puts it back into the hands, you know, um, of the people of some, you know, in some sort, you know, um, we'll see, you know, um, allegedly certain things have already been changed based on him doing so, you know, um, put it this way, whatever happens is, is going to be secret, it's not going to be something that's spoken about, 
So mm -hmm. until these things are brought to the forefront and brought to the limelight, we are still able to do the things that we are doing in commerce until someone say that we're no longer able to do that. So you can still discharge debt um, now, paper for paper, until that is no longer accessible. All right, so let's get into understanding the executor office and the use of the executor letter. All right, this is based off of um, David Clarence. Adjourned, to put off, defer, postpone. That's the dictionary fourth edition. Adjourned, assign a day, meet, phrase adjourn to a state to a stated day. The census to set a date for a re meeting, meaning to close a meeting with or without intentions to reconvene. Um meaning to go into a body to another place, colloquial, the unhistorical D was added, all right, in the 16th century, adjourned, adjourning, all right, you can find more at www.eddyonline.com, all right, let me continue on. Aggregate, arrogate means to claim for oneself. Arrogated, arrogating, you go to the same. Look at chattel, all right? An article of personal property, any species of property not amounting to a fee hole or fee in land. The term chattels is more comprehensive than the goods as it includes animates as well as inanimated property. Last logic state fourth edition. Shadow. Property goods. Old French chattel. Chattel goods, wealth, possessions, property, profit, cattle. So there it is. Chattel. Is cattle. It says right there, property. See cattle, which is the old, which is what? From the old New French form of the same word. Accla what? What is it? Application to slaves is a rhetorical figure of abolitionists. Constructive trust. A trust raised by construction of law or raising by operation of law as distinguished from an express trust. Wherever the circumstances of a transaction are such that the person who takes the legal estate and property cannot also enjoy the benefit, the beneficial interest without necessarily violating some established principle of equity, the court will immediately raise a constructive trust and fasten it upon the conscience of the legal owner so as to convert him into a trustee for the parties who are in equity or entitled to benefit uh, um, beneficial enjoyment. All right, so this is Hill's Trustees 116, one Spence um, Esquire Jurisdiction or, Jud or Judas Prudence uh, 511. Now, decadence, a deceased person, an individual who have died, the term literally means one who is dying. Now, all of us are dying, so um, as, we, or as we go older, we grow older, so, you know, you can actually use the decadence, and that's one of the ways in which that they was able to utilize, because it says departing, withdrawing, um, if you notice on the form 56, they have an area there for a decadent, all right? Um, even on the UCC, they have, a form, they have an area for the decadent, all right? Here it is, the estate. 
The word estate is a word of the greater extension and comprehension every species of property, real or personal. It describes both the corpus, all right, describes both the corpus and the extent of interest. It signifies everything which is riches and or fortune may consist. All right. Estate, rank, standing, condition, from Angola or Anglo um, France, old France, estate, state, position, condition, health, status, legal estate, from status, state, or condition, from root of stead, to stand, from um, English. Um, stay to stand. All right. Um, once again, a special, preeminent, important. Belong to a particular kind of species from species kind. Latin word with initial spe spe spe. Um, usually uh, um, acquired. With an E when borrowed from old French, modern English, by uh, restoring the word to special, originally with the same sense or special, um, later restricted to feelings, qualities, etc. E special, belonging to a particular kind of species from special kind, Latin word with the initial spe, spe, si, or se. Once again, usually required an E. It was borrowed from the Old English. Modern French also restored the word to special. Um, once again, they spell it. Here we are, the executor. General executor. A general executor is one who is appointed to administrate the whole estate without any limits of time or place and all subject matter. Will be as Lord Dictionary 1856 edition. General Executor, one who has power is not limited either territorially or the duration or subject of his trust. That's all dictionary for his edition. Executor, he to whom another commits by will the, exec the execution of his last will and testament. William C. Anderson in the law in Dictionary of Law, 1893. General Executor. An executor whose power is unlimited at the time, place, and subject matter. Executor D. Sun Tort. Executor in his own wrong. A person who assumes to act as executor of an estate without any lawful warrant or authority by who, by his intermeddling, made himself liable as an executor to a certain extent. And this is what they are doing every day in court. The district attorney, the judge, they're acting as um, the executor. Mm -hmm. They're saying that they have power over you. This is what the judge is simply saying. We say, well, um, you're here. And you ask him jurisdiction, and you say he has jurisdiction. Well, that means he's acting as the executor of the office, of the estate. If a stranger takes him upon the act as executor without any just authority to buy intermeddling with the goods of the deceased or many other transactions, he is called in law as the executor of his own wrong, the son tour. All right. Now let's go down to 26. It says the absorption of an office or character cannot confirm the right or privilege of it, although it may charge the absurd of the duty and obligations annexed to it. On this principle, an executor de son tour is an executor only for the purpose of being sued, not for the purpose of suing. In point of form, he is sued as if he were a rightful executor. He is not... Um, Denominated in the declaration executor. This sort of tour. So, I can say 
person having possessory rights who can control what goes on on premise on who takes the first possession of such of things of what there are no owner one who occupies and takes possession um, one who has the actual use possession and control of the thing occupants right to take possession of occupancy fact of occupying all right condition of being an occupant let's look at register all right an officer authorized by law to keep a record called the register or registry as the register for the probation of will register shortening of the registry one who keeps a record all right now keep that in mind Now let's go to the state law name. The all name or all cap name the state. The word that does not appear on the birth certificate is front of the all cap name and is part of the name of the estate. So don't put it in front of the estate name. All right. All caps um, name in the estate or in place of the word. The name should appear, excuse me, the should appear using the all caps name estate. Um, however, your name or present or presented on your birth certificate is how you should present it all in your documentation. Whether the name is in upper or lower case or all cap letters, be sure to use it in all caps for the name of the estate. If you have used junior, sir, etc. on your life, but it is not written as such on your birth certificate, don't use it as part of the estate name. All right, perform exactly how you how your name is written in the birth certificate and do it in all caps. All right, so general information about the estate. Station of the estate. Once again, when you were born, a certificate of birth was created in your all caps name, which is a creation of the estate. By the all caps name, the name estate is deliberately left off the name all caps. In the birth certificate in it that hides it. The name of all caps is unincorporated association in the state. All right, the all caps name is a what? Decadence. You remember, we told you that that name is civilist more tools, dead in the eyes of the law. So hence, it's decadence. Remember, it's dying, it's dead. That's why we don't, don't say that we civilist more tools. Because that actually correlates back to the name in all caps. The estate was created for your benefit and use when you, as the grantor, has placed from your landmark, which is your footprints, on the certificate of birth, and you are still alive. Your parents are the creator of the estate. They created you. All right? A marriage is a trust. When a birth occurs, the mother is coerced into signing the birth certificate as a trustee. So now the entity in the world can go after the trustee. The birth certificate refers to her as the informant. Your first lawful act was putting your footprint on your birth certificate. And after that, you were in the, you were in the world. Being in the world has to do with being legal, not lawful. The corporate state did not create the estate. The granted did so with the footprint on the document. Right? The estate died and your mother and finally became the executor in the executor office. You are an earthly estate walking around. The granted continues to live and when he or she dies, a certificate of death will be issued. The certificate of death, excuse me, of, of birth and life birth certificate is the public record of the estate that the estate is probated. It is recognized recognition of the world of the grantor, which is the footprint, which is the will. Because the seal and 
the signature on the birth certificate or the certificate of birth that is not prima facie, all right, which appears to be real in is it? And remember, we told you prima facie, here it is at first sight, on the first appearance, on the face of it, so far as to be judged from the first discourse, presumable, or presumably, a fact presumed to be true unless dis disproved by some evidence to the contrary. In other words, only thing you have to do is just rebut what is the allegations and remember how you do that? Do an affidavit. Remember, your truth must be expressed in the form of an affidavit. All right? That's why you have to do that affidavit as to authenticate in your birth certificate, which puts you back into head of the trust because your truth is expressed in the form of an affidavit. Remember, we told you that um, before. So rather than certifying proof, finish, adjourn, done, a judgment that the estate has been probated, it may be in a state because a trust cannot come before an estate. A trust can only exist if it is already in a state in existence. Hmm. So you can't have a trust unless you have established an estate. So this is why we're going in order. This is why we have not talked about doing a trust yet because you haven't done the estate. Once we finish the estate section, then we go into the trust information. All right. Right? Now, the address of the estate yeah. is the file number on the birth certificate. The estate resides at the file number. The estate is restricted to the file number. It cannot move anywhere else. All right, so when asked, where do you live? Right there. Where are your belongings? I'm homeless. They cannot discriminate against you when you say that you're homeless because you're saying that you have no corporate residence. A copy of the birth certificate is proof of this state. Once again, a copy of the birth certificate is the proof of this state. Once again, a copy of the birth certificate is proof of this state. Other proof is the existence of the estate or bills, mortgage papers, credit reports, driver's license, etc. that all have your name in all caps. Never use your social security card as identification unless you're doing the procedure which that we talked about, which is taking it down to the DMV in order to get identification. <laughs> okay? Now, the SS Trust is that we are using against you. This is what they're using against us. Now, check this out. Um, David Clance, he explains um, who can have an estate. All right? Note, a certificate of citizenship or naturalization certificate is not a substitute for a certificate of birth. A certificate of citizenship does not create an estate. So a person who has had naturalized does not have an estate. If he came from a country that does not issue birth certificates, if a man marries a woman who became natu um, naturalized in America, the wife's social security trust comes under the husband's estate. If you do not have a certificate of birth, you cannot uh, occupy the executor, executrice office. All right? If the country I have, I have a question. who you are born belongs to the IMF, there is a good chance that there is an estate. If name on the birth certificate is in all caps and you have a bond number on it, that's a good indication that it's in the states. Our bodies are composed of mostly water and the remainder of Earth. We are um, said to be walking, talking, independent islands, countries, nations, and independent states, hence e states, status. Right? Nature of the estate. Never before are referred to as the estate as your estate. All right, but for convenience and economics and words of this document, the compiler is doing it that um anyway. All right, now the name in all caps is defined to the United States and the states. Statutory um, that the state and the 
executive office are immune from the jurisdiction of the United States and the states is found in the Foreign Immunity Act because the state is a creditor. All right, here it is. Read Title 28, USC 1300, FSIA, foreign states means foreign estates. Just substitute word estate to the word state, which read an act. It says the estate and the man functioning in the executive office when located at the General Post Office, United States Minor, Outlaying Islands, zip code or zip plus four, which is zero 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 dash nine 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 eight of states are described in the states equals the states and executor. Foreign Sovereign Immunity Act, FSIA, applies because the, um, the states is foreign at USMOI, all right? Now, you can look up to www.law.cornell.edu. You do not own the estate. It's the grantor's estate. It's not your office, all right? Even though I call it your office, it is in a sense. I'll get to that in a second. The grantor has liability. You do not want to own it because ownership creates liability. However, you can control the estate and its assets. The estate is in the nature of a trust, but it's not a trust. The estate is non-corporate. The estate is subject to trust law and is affected by probate law. Probate law is the highest form of law. Scriptures is trust and estate law and trumps all other law i.e. treaty, civil, commercial, well, criminal, law of nations, democracy, probate, equity, just made up rules for the world game, for lawyers to control everything. True law has to be simple and working equally for everyone, hence equality. UCC is not contract law because there's not for disclosure. So, this trumps all of the law when we're talking about estate law. Right? The estate is the realm of action that is combined of the physical and spiritual aspects of each person or natural person individual. individual. The estate is older than any form of law or legal issues that is in or around the world today and it has been passed down through generation having came from God. And as such, no law, no form of law other than scriptures can access or penetrate the truth of the estates. The executor office is in appearance to be as high or higher form than the, even the term sovereign. Alright, i.e. ruler, pope, king, or any other illusion of man's superior, superiority or some understanding it. So with this level of power, the office is in a position to operate in private or public. This is what I was just talking about, about private or public. On either, um, on equal or higher ranking than any other as long as it does so in honor and without causing or creating harm or problems for others. All are warned to not attempt to utilize the um, estate for in, um, impure intent. Evil or selfish intent will come back in your face full force. Alright, so points of clarity and distinction. When someone dies, there is an estate created by going through probate. The estate is a worldly estate of a dead person that is involved in commerce and there is tax liability. It is different from um, the estate created by your birth certificate. All right, the executive office. Until recently, everybody has abandoned the executive office and the states. Once you occupy the executive office, you cannot be, you, you cannot be considered or called what? Chattel. So this is a way in which that now puts you back in full life, is doing the executive letter. Once you have authenticated your birth certificate, why are we authorized to occupy 
the executive office. Well, when you was born, you were sent the executive office, which is the birth certificate, and then only three people could get a copy of the birth certificate, you, mom, and dad. Once you reached the age of maturity, 21, you became the only one authorized. All right? Now, as such, one can not operate as the occupant of the office and then attempt to operate in a different capacity at will, i.e. as a trustee or beneficiary in a trust or either in a different <laughs> capacity. For example, at a damaged party or citizen in order to be able to bring a legal action into some, um, somewhat, something that would be termed a lower court with less power than executive order. All right? In other words, you won't want to do that. To do this would be indicative of having a double mind. Divided house can't stand. All right? This is precisely what the bar files have done to us. Lured us into uh, functioning in a trustee capacity under the secured um, over the Social Security Trust so that we are then being held liable for the charges. When the executive order is occupied, all lower offices or false offices, offices are naturally bound to perform the highest level of the service possible so the executor is protected and the office is defended. Once you step up and occupy the executive office, then there can no longer be any trustee position. When functioning in the executive office, it cancels out all trustee function. It overrides them all. In other words, the judge can't do anything, neither can the DA, who's posing as the state, posing as the people. Mm. However, the executive office can appoint trustees to accomplish certain legal um, limited tasks, but can never grant general power of the attorney over his state affairs. So in other words, you can send out a Form 56 and a fiduciary um, letter to the judge to do to dismiss cases and do things on your behalf in that way. However, um, they cannot permanently be over the executive office. When you function in the executive office of their state, you deny everyone from exercising a presumption of, of um, authority to administrate the state. Thus, the executive office would and should have no reason or need to be to ever consider a legal action in a lower um, system as the office. So in other words, you would be able to send proof of you coming back into your legal um, of, of your executive office to these lower courts. How would you do that? Well, you would send them a copy of your authentication process. As remember, what is this? What is the executive office? It's the birth certificate. So now you're using the copies of your birth certificate to verify that you are now back into the office of, of, of your executive office or executive's office. Mm -hmm. Your birth certificates have been authenticated, and that verifies that you are now back into positioning. Okay, now I got a question concerning um, after, because I just, I put my uh, documents on a public record and I'm waiting for them to come back because they put it on the, uh, for a public record. So after I get done doing all that, uh, what other steps do I take so far as the DMV and the Social Security office, but so far as letting them know uh, who I am when I got my, uh, my name corrected? <clears throat> Well, you take your um, name corrected form down into the um, Social Security, and if you um, choose to operate in commerce, then you will put, you will tell them that you had a name um, change, and um, they will give you um, a, a, a document stating that you have done so at the Social Security Administration. Then you take that down along with your name correction form to the DMV, and then get an ID. And um, if you operate in commerce, then you will get a driver's license. Now, once again, all this is optional, all right? You don't have to do anything after you put your documents on the public record. Let me make that clear, all right? However, oh, okay. Thank you. who want to operate in commerce once they come out, 
you know, once they have this process done. And there's nothing wrong with that because, once again, there is no birth certificate attached to your indigenous appellation. You only have a live tank birth form from United Washington, which is not on the public, which is not um, on the stock market. All right? <coughs> okay, so what you're saying is that in order for you to, in order for you to, I'm sorry, go ahead, Elaine. No, I was just simply saying that you, you that is, this is what I'm talking about, that's a choice, all right? And that's a choice that we gave. There's, there's two processes of when you do your common law name correction. You can simply not do anything else after you put your documents on the public record, whether it's done at the Register of Deeds, which is county recorder, or either it's done at the Clerk of Civil Filing or Superior Court. Whichever place it was that you have put it on the public record, that is fine. All right? You, have, you don't have to do anything further after that if you choose not to. All right? The more that you use that name, your indigenous appellation, um, the more mail that comes to you based on that, then that is who you are. You do not have to go and put your name in the newspaper or um, that's an option also. All right? You don't have to. Okay. So, Some people so that's do. what the so that's what the right said. Okay. Right. Um, but you do not have to go before a judge. You do not have to put your name on the bulletin board in, in um county because you do not go through the same pre um, procedure as um someone who paid a lawyer three hundred dollars just to do their name um change um name um change for them or stand before a judge in order to get authorization and utilize that name. I gave an illustration before how um, a young sister um, named her son Messiah and went before the judge and the judge said, the only Messiah I know is Jesus and um, he ain't having that name. <laughs> Ridiculous, right? You know what I'm saying? So she couldn't even name her son Messiah. All right, so of course she did get it eventually done um, months later you know, when she went before another judge. However, um, the problem was is that you don't have to have another man to tell you uh, what name you can name yourself. When we showed you in our documentation the West Law, uh, uh, specifically from the West Law, West Law Dictionary, um, where it states specifically that under common law, you have the right to change your name to any name in which that you choose to, and no one has the authority in order to dictate otherwise. That's right in your documentation. On your, I was just about to say that. Right, on your notice of intent um, page for um, common law name correction. So this is the way that we develop the procedure in order to do so, so that we don't have to go before them um, in that regard. We simply go to the clerk, get it put on a public record. We're using it from that day four. We don't have to ask anyone else because we already gave them notice. Um, and they received the notice because they put it on the record. Um, so you don't have to do anything after that if you choose not to. However, for those who do operate in commerce, um, because there's, there's many people who drive 18-wheelers, they drive taxi cabs, they drive, these are commercial things. These are commercial venues. So you have to have commercial items. So what we do, we develop another procedure in which that, okay, well, you would take your um, come along in correction form, the one with the brackets around it. Go to the Social Security Administration, tell them that you had his name change. You don't have to say name correction, name change. That's for them, not for you. You know that you had a name correction. Um, they would take it, make a copy, give you back a letter, stay in within seven to ten days. You have the card mailed to you. Um, but the letter you can take down with you right then to the DMV along with a copy of your come along in correction and go and get an ID or either a driver's license in your indigenous appellation. So now you're able to drive in commerce with your indigenous appellation, but yet still don't have a birth certificate attached. So you're not up in the original bond, all right, because a Mustafa Bay don't exist in their system as a what is in the state. Uh, uh as a straw man. Right, as a straw man or as an exec, as an <clears throat> estate. I got a question about that. So that's why I'm, uh, I'm, a, I'm a barber. I cut hair. Would, right. that, would the same thing apply to me? Yes, that's commerce. 
you make your money. Okay. But once again, you can do it either way. That's up to you. This is, these are the choices that we had to learn how to do. Like, for example, here it is, African Bambada, father of hip-hop. He got reclamated by us. Now, what would it look like us telling him that he, he can't use African Bambada Bay? Um, you know what I'm saying? Um, except, you know, in the nation. Well, he's hip-hop for everybody around the world. He travels around the world. He gives lectures around the world. He still do music. He's still dealing in commerce. You see? So we had to develop another procedure. These are all procedures, but we have mastered these procedures so that everybody benefits as a whole, as a nation, and still correlate perfectly with the Declaration of Rights of Indigenous People. As the Declaration of Rights of Indigenous People states that Indigenous people have the right to participate in the state process if they so choose to. In the life of the state if they so choose to. And so we developed that second procedure based off the um, indigenous people being able to participate in the life of the state. What's the life of the state? Commerce. Remember, we gave you the um, um for commerce. What's, what's, com what's the definition of commerce? Intercourse. Trade. Import and export. And that's what a person is doing when it um, comes, when they're operating outside, um, personally, um, you know, when they're outside of, of their national status and they're dealing with others who are not nationals. That's still intercourse. So what will be the way for them to be able to inter, um, interact with them? See, d see d these are the plans, these are the procedures that we've mastered over the last 15 years. And we've been doing this longer than um, any of these so-called groups that's out now. Yeah. But I'd like to I'd like to share something. Um, yes. The brother, the the gentleman who prepared the information that we're studying tonight on this state, he's a Christian, and in his mind, when he says scripture, he's talking about the Bible. And for right. those of us who are not Christians, I just yeah. wanted to. You know, said for the record that indigenous people have their own scripture, i.e., the wisdom of their ancestors. Right. You know. And so I just didn't want any of the brothers and the sisters who did not know the background of that gentleman to believe that his use of the term scripture limited our application to a Judeo Christian paradigm utilizing the Bible as their uh, highest uh, law. Right. And, of course, we know that we go beyond the information. We're just using it as a, as a basis so everybody can become familiarized with the operation and the understanding mm -hmm. of the executor office or the executrix office and how to utilize um, and come back into control of the executor office. Um, of course, mm -hmm. you know, um, scriptures to us is the Holy Quran, the Bahá'í Gita, the Hispanishad. Exactly. <laughs> you know, exactly. It, 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 that's everything. The local of right, yeah. right, right. It's yeah. called the Holy Right. We, we call all of that the Holy Scriptures. So, you know. Exactly. Um, right, right. He's stuck on one, but, you know, we, we love many. So... <laughs> Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, the reason, the, the reason I mention that, brothers, because I hear some people on Facebook, for example, who, uh, when they get this information from this brother, right away they're talking about, oh, my God, I got to get the Bible. Uh, you know, this thing is all about the Bible. They, they get it all the way twisted. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you don't want to be following them Christians, though. No, 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 no. You, you take what you can, and um, as they say, you uh, um, think of it as a, as a piece of fruit. Um, you know, you eat, you know, to the kernel or the core, and then you know, um, you throw, you know, you need to, you throw the um, seed into the ground and let it grow another crop. 
You know what I'm saying? If he needs to, you know. <laughs> so you eat what you can of it, you know, and um, let it nourish you, and you know, and that's what we're doing here because we know the mm-hmm. good, we know the co- we know the correct procedure, you know, for this. Right. So once again, our procedure once again is different because we're indigenous. So we're going to show you how we flipped it and also was able to utilize the information um, at the same time in order to help bring about, once again, remedy for our people. So here, thus, the executive office would or should have no reason or no need to consider a legal action in a lower court or system as the office has the authority to submit either a order or request the lower office enforcement holders to perform corrective action. The executive order is the court. Uh oh. The executor office is the court, as the sovereign is in equality. Definition of court, Black's Law Dictionary. The sovereign, with their real retinue, retinue, uh, whatever they may be, is the executor office. Operating in the executor office entails that all acts and actions of the executor are done to expand and increase the executor, excuse me, the estate, and better our fellow man and woman as commanded by the first executor of the first estate, which is the breath, which is he refers to as Yahshua. But as we know, Yahshua is Shu, which is the ancient commanded deity, which is the personification of air, which is the breath of life. Mm-hmm. Because without mm-hmm. the breath, there is no life. Um, there is no estate. <laughs> All right. Um, so mm-hmm. that is the first estate. You know, executor of the um, of the first estate is the breath. Um, hence, the reason why they say mm-hmm. Jesus is the first begotten Son of God. All right. So um, we know that this is all ancient comedic information. They have twisted into the Christian paradigm um, because once again, the Vatican, those who follow the uh, John, the Jane Calvins and uh, 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 Martin Luther's from the Protestant movement, you know, um, had to create a paradigm slightly different than the Vatican because the Vatican was selling too many trinkets. Oh, here go the tears mm-hmm. of Jesus. Oh, here go the footprint of Jesus. Come on and walk in. You know, this is the stuff that they was doing in the 1500s, you know, um, and Martin Luther got upset about it. He nailed the 98 pieces on the Wittenberg Church of um, England and um, hence started the Protestant movement, you know, and all of us have come through the Protestant movement in one shape, form, or fashion, Baptist, Methodist, Pentecostal Holiness, Jehovah Witness, Seventh-day Adventist, Mormon, all of that came from out of that genre of uh, pro- protesters, all right? So we understand um, historically, you know, um, the Christian paradigm and how that came about. But the word Christian comes from the word kares originally, which is the ancient comedic word for heru, which is Christ consciousness or heru consciousness, which is talking about the awakening power of the soul. Um, mm. So that's why... Um, the word Christian means to be Christ-like, you know, but yet they don't necessarily define what a Christ is, you know, um, mm-hmm. because they're too busy under crisis, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so mm-hmm. if they're in a state of crisis, they can't tell you what a Christ is, you know, but uh, <laughs> what a Christ Boom. is, a Christ is Hell, your awakened soul. That's what Christ is. Your awakened soul. And that is when our set, which is Kutalini, moves up through the spinal column. And she connects with her husband, which is the father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Oh, that is our saw, which is the soul embedded inside of the pineal gland. And when the two merge, oh, <laughs> such a holy divine marriage takes place. Huh? And from that divine marriage, huh, <laughs> come forth the God here with <laughs> In the name of Osa, in the name of Osa, it comes forth, and now your soul is awakened, and you can go and fly on the wings of the wind, on the wings of the 
That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right, go to wings Josh. Above, you can go and fly now. Okay, now, now you, now you're able to take flight. That's now, now R. Kelly is right. I believe I can fly. Yeah, I can believe uh, I can touch the sky. Uh, <laughs> that a nigga right. <laughs> but you ain't doing no, but you ain't doing no real flying until then. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, I just want to break it down because it's esoteric and you know most people can't yeah. accept them, you know the esoteric teachings and that's the problem that's going on now that's why there's so many damn debates about nothingness you know right that's right nothing practical and don't tell me how to get there this they're doing the same shit that that I'm gonna left the church for right mm-hmm. and, what, and, and that demonstration you just the soul. Right. How, how yeah, are you going to yeah, say my soul yeah. and can't tell me what the soul is? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. What he's saying. So, so right. Arlene, when the, when, the, when the chakras and the kundalini, when all that lines up and hits the pineal gland, uh, right. what's supposed to happen for us, man? It, you become it's Heru. To, it just happened, isn't it? You become Heru. You become the awoken soul. In other words... Your thoughts become the mind. Your thoughts um, are now reson- no is no longer resonating at the level of just a man. Your now your thoughts are resonating at that of a God. Matter of fact, yo um as um as God says um Jesus I believe Jesus said um um God's will and my will are one. Well, that's what happens now with mm-hmm. you. Your will and his and um God's will, which is nothing but your higher self, becomes one mm-hmm. now. You know, All right. it's, that's it's not. not it's not a spooky God somewhere that you can't connect back with. You debase and tore yourself away from Allah or your God, or which is your father, which was in heaven, which is the awakening soul. Mm-hmm. Because you got caught up into the materialistic world and these things in which that takes place here on planet Earth. Eight hours working a day, having to deal with family structure, deal with health issues, deal with... um um. You know, everything that's going on on planet Earth, that's a lot of um, stuff to be messing with, you know, and that does distract us and takes us away from our spiritual um, work. Well, that's what mm-hmm. the education system, that's what the education system. Oh, that was done, like right, that. that was done purposely to do that, right. Yeah, right. right. I mean, so, so what about the, the Merkabah, though? The Merkabah, that is only, that only comes from the awakening soul. That's when you have awakened your soul, which is Heru. Um, you come back into Christ consciousness, Buddhahood, uh, Muhammad, um, hood, um, whatever term that you want to refer to. It's nothing more than the awakening of the crown chakra. Once the crown chakra, mm-hmm. is open, you de- um, you de- um, develop that golden ray over top of your head, which is called the um, sun disk of Atan. You know, and you become um, the sun on earth as mm-hmm. it is in heaven. You now mm-hmm. become, you are now the son of man or in the image of the son of God as the sun up in the sky. Yeah. My only, my only thing about that is, like, like um, I, I know everybody in this class thinks differently than everybody else. I don't know. Um, so I, my thing is I want to know how would somebody know that they, they do have the uh, mark of life. Or, oh, you'll feel it. <clears throat> There's a technique called the ancient death technique designed by um, um, Javella Melchizedek. 18 breaths, 24 breaths, and 28 breath um, technique of how to develop and how to um, activate your um, Merkaba or your Merkaba. Yeah, I, 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 try, I tried a couple of those. I think you said you hold your breath for um, 18 seconds or something like that. No, no, no. This, 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 um, you have to focus on each chakra. Um, in particular, the lower chakras, um, and do certain um, chakra cleansing along with certain breath and color, focus of colors um, of each chakra in order to cleanse them. And then by doing so, of mastering the breath at the same time and and having your awareness and your conscious level at each one, um, you are able to develop it um, at the solar plexus or at the heart chakra or et cetera. I wish that you develop your um, your Merkaba. You and know? you teach yeah, the I, technique too, brother, right? I, I've seen the yeah, video. Well, you, I, you, I, 
I, I teach, or I te actually teach this, teach this information in the healing class. How to activate your Merkaba or your Merkaba. Okay, how much is that class? Um, that's a three months class. That's a thousand dollars. Okay. But tonight we do need to the water. <laughs> <laughs> Well, tonight, what, 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 we can sign up for $100, that's what you say. Yeah, well, I mean, um, any, yeah, you can, you can come to class on any amount of um, donation, you know, um, just to get certified after the three months. Um, okay. You know, you have to have um, everything paid up. But you can come to class on any amount. Yeah, we, okay. we, don't, we, don't, we don't say, huh, come on now, you got to... Money that jingles, we rather have that with folks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we, don't, we, don't do, we don't do we don't do none of that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you no, know, we just actually you know give a donation, and that can be whatever it is, and I can ask the class. <laughs> All right. <laughs> 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 wow! Yeah, because I was uh, I was actually doing research, Arlene, and I was, and it says that you can meditate and breathe at the same time to raise your Kundalini too, though. Yeah, yeah. That's what you're saying. Once, once you get to a certain level of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, you're there. Right. That's what I was thinking, but you know, I I just wanted. To. But yeah, but when that first sun kick in, in, though, you know, it's supposed yeah. to be on and popping, though. Exactly. That's true. Dr. Deborah Blair spoke about that. And um, he said this year going into 2017, we're going to see, too. So, um, for all we know, he might have been taken up in order to make that possible. You know what I mean? I don't yeah. think it's a coincidence yeah. that, he just passed last, you know, that he just passed last month. When he was talking about yeah. um, that yeah. song coming in this particular year, and he's gonna pass the first month of it coming in, you know what I mean? That's crazy. Man. <laughs> what about the second son he was talking about? Because I know he was saying that we're gonna get a third son if we need it. The second son is already here. Every um, people have been seeing that all over the um, all over the world, taking yeah. pictures of it. Um, dude's yeah. sons. Yeah. What about the? I was. I was. My question was the third. What? What about the third one? Because I heard him talk about that probably that's, like twenty years. That's, ago. What I, that's what I'm saying. I haven't seen the third one yet. He said that's going to come into view sometime this year or either going into next year. So that's what I'm saying. That's no coincidence that he is. You know that he was taken. You know, um, the beginning of this year, which is the year which that he said that we will begin to start seeing it. Mm -hmm. Because he was the main one talking about it. So, as you know, the ancestors could have said, well, you know, you're going to have to be the manifestator of that third son, um, Dr. Blair. Yeah, we we need, we mm -hmm. probably need to get these albions off this planet so we, we can start operating right anyway. Well, I mean, shoot, um, this definitely will have to be some divine intervention. But I, I, I appreciate Dr. David Blair because he told us over 20 years ago, he said, um, that it's going to be like an ant trying to hit like a tidal wave. Mm. You know? So we're going to um, turn into God anyway. Yeah, yeah, that's, that, yeah, that's, I mean, they're trying their best to stop that, but the only thing they're doing is delaying the inevitable. Mm -hmm. You know, the fluoride in the water, the chemtrails in the sky, the GMO food, they're trying their best to keep us at a cellular level of entrapment. Um, Dr. Phil referred to yeah. it as light, um, um, light down cold transmission. They're trying to lock our light down and keep it, you know, um, <clears throat> keep it confined, you know, because they don't know, because they already know that what happened with X-Men and um, in the movie Push and um, Tomorrow's People and, um, you know, all these movies that they had coming out. Powder. That these powder. things was, right, pu right, pu right. All these things was getting ready to manifest and happen with us. And in some people, it has begun. 
you know? Yeah, because I've seen a... It's um, national. Yeah, because I've seen an Asian dude on in the what's that in the East. This dude was able to light up paper with his hand, bro. With, like like right. set it on fire with his hand, bro. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's brother. Um, yeah, I know who you're talking about. That's John. Is that mm-hmm. Qi Gong? No, is that you know? Yeah, like, that's that? that's John Chan. Yeah, that's John Chan. Well, yeah, that's that's Qi Gong. Yeah, that's what we teach. We teach Qi Gong, Tai Chi. So yeah, that's Qi Gong. A former Qi Gong. Yeah. Uh, oh. um, two more, two more breathing. Oh. But we say he's able to move. Um, um, it's called Lee, um, Lee Kong Jin. Lee Kong Chin um, is the name of the that move their, um, the their, their energy body, and electrify um, whatever they touch. Hey, well, he should be able to. Can he, can he touch the? Uh, can he touch the Federal Reserve and, and move them up out of here? <laughs> well, see, that's, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's what I be talking about. I say, shit, I don't, I don't need the gimmicks. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay, what man, I feel. I'd be like, you know, if I seen Chris Angel or David Blaine, yeah, nigga, that that's a nice trick. That's that's. I'm, I'm glad you can levitate. All right, now, nigga, um, um, bring this nigga back here from uh, from dead. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, if you're going to use some power, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to damn just use it for for a damn TV show. No, yeah, that's right. Right. You know what I'm yeah, you know? that's right. I'm starting to unload him with that, you know? Right. We already untouchable, you know, just from the thought form. Imagine, imagine you could pick up a car and, like, like throw it on top of a house. Or like, that's pretty much right. what it's going to be at. Right. If you seem dumb. So we got the wisdom not. Right, 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 right. So for us to operate at a higher level, you know, instead of just these um, cheap, you know, cheap things, you know, you know, niggas develop these gifts. Next thing you know, they damn trying to do a David Blaine number, be on TV or something. They ain't trying to, they ain't trying to do any the benefit of the people, yo. <laughs> right, and be a superhero like Naga Man or something. Right, niggas, niggas be like, um, um, you see me do a card trick? <laughs> I was like Supergirl, call it for you. Right, right, right. You know, brother, I got a quick, I got a quick question, please. Right, Dr. Liam, I have a quick question, please. Yes. The uh, on the uh, UCC one, the amount that we're uh, declaring uh, the, the our man trust to be valued at is that an arbitrary amount or is that a, 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 a definite? That's an arbitrary amount that has to be. No, no, that's, no. that's an arbitrary amount. You choose the amount. One hundred billion dollars in silver. Um, I put on mine one hundred trillion dollars in gold. Okay. Okay. You know, um, and of course I did mine like shoot twelve years ago. But so. Uh, okay. But yeah, you know, it's whatever you um, choose to um, make. All right, gotcha. right okay, appreciate it. Let me read this last part before we go. But here is state as highest court. This is important. The register is the probate court, not the judge in the probate court. In Great, in of Great Britain, just as in the United States, the register is the court. The probate court is the paperwork at the register's office. The probate court just proves that the executor has already done. The executor office is higher then the probate court. The court does not have jurisdiction in persona or subject matter. This is what I was telling you all over their state. The only probate court possible to bring a claim into one described on the birth certificate, they won't do that. The executor office is the highest office in trust law and the highest authority. The, exec- the estates are just or the authorities. All the other courts are courts of inferior jurisdictions. So the executor office is the highest office in trust law and the highest authority. So it's the highest court. All right. Also, so then we shouldn't have to we shouldn't have to go to the probate court in order to have an estate set up. Well, this is what it's getting ready to say here. The estate has been probated from the beginning. A birth certificate was the registered seal shows that the estate is either in probate or has already been probated. Um, David Clarence thinks that it has already been probated. Why? Because the birth certificate is the certificate of death 
and the creation of an estate. Now, when you go, because I've had this happen to me, when you go to a bank to open an estate account, they're not trying to hear that. They want papers from the trophy court where the judge has signed an order opening an estate. Exactly. That's exactly correct. That's correct. That's so what, what paperwork can we shove down the legal department's throat to make them, you know, line up with what we know? Um, the counter suit. <laughs> I thought so. Or a lien, perhaps. Lean on their ass. Right. The counter suit, which is your counter claim. Your counter claim is what shuts them down because you're saying yeah. that you're in violation of they, they, they sued you by giving you a ticket saying that you are violated of a statute that you violated this statute well you're saying well right. you're violated your damn own law which is United States Supreme Court case law you're violated your own uh -huh. treaty law. you're violated um, my executive office you're you know of course like he said you may not or you may say that is the executive office. Like what we say, we say your indigenous appellation right. um, of the executive office of, and of course, you put your name in all caps, your birth right. name, and put the estate. <clears throat> right? So okay. um, we claim it in that way. Right? So he says here right. that the birth certificate is the certificate of death and the creation of an estate. Since the seal and signature is on the certificate of birth, it is certified proof that the estate has been probated. It may be in a state because a trust cannot proceed in a state. Exactly. So that's how we know. All right, so that's how we know. Right. And of course, once right. again, you can state in your counterclaim that they're violating that procedure because, as a matter of fact, um, then um, it was no full disclosure of this right. taking place. You know, so, and then of course, right. you can put all types of laws in there um, based on the violations that they have done against you. And then you have to and put, so, as part of the counterclaim, you have to put some type of bill um, in which that you're saying, well, you owe me this for this violation. Like um, transfer, transfer versus um, um, Florida temp, um, temper. Yeah. Temple of um, yep. Florida. Right. It says eighteen thousand yep. dollars for um uh, just one minute. This this is per minute. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Eighteen thousand yeah, yeah. dollars per minute for violation of right. an, of, of a false arrest. Mm -hmm. So if they take mm -hmm. you down to the courthouse and um uh, uh you know, um put you before the magistrate and the magistrate decides to put you in jail or either to release you on your own um infuition. Um, that still is an arrest, and that is, and you have to think about the amount of time that they have took out your life, and based on eighteen thousand dollars per each minute that they have done so. Yeah. So let's say you yeah. sat in jail for um, an hour. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's okay. sixty minutes. So sixty times okay. eighteen thousand is what? <laughs> yeah. Isn't that crazy? And, and that's what you write up that damn counterclaim, um, stating after you state that they violated the laws, here go my damn bill to go along with that. Now let's see if your damn okay. statute, let's see if that statute that you claim that I violated, which is one hundred and thirty-five dollars maybe or a little bit more, um, supersedes the amount that I'm gonna kick your ass with. <laughs> it don't gotta be the UCC, right? No, 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 no. You don't. You don't even have to use the UCC. Is it you using right. counter suit and, and getting at them using their own laws and speaking with their own stuff? Because we're the executors so now anyway. We're the higher you court. You got it. So you fixed them with All the right. same thing that uh, Trezvan stuck them with, talking about the bank now. Right. Right. And, and, and okay, so the same, the same rule would apply in the case where they won't accept a person's uh, – the indigenous ID to open an account. No, you got to have state authorized ID. You're not going to open this bank account. You counterclaim that ass. Right, you can counterclaim them. Exactly. 
because mm -hmm. um, a bank policy does not supersede um, the Constitution, treaty law, or indigenous law, which is international law. That's right. the bank. Po that's the bank policy. But you know, what I'm saying just like um, the bank is asking for a damn social security card, but yet the IRS states specifically that you don't need, um, you don't give no one your social security card number. In fact, they tell you to leave it at home. Do not take it out. Right. Oh, wow. Right. So, so I mean, you know, th these are just the things that you can hit them with. Um, based, well, this is the procedure of the IRS. Now, if you want to, ma'am, sir, um, we can call the IRS right now. Matter of fact, let me, um, hold me, um, give me the phone. <laughs> exactly. You know, so... It's just the, the thing that Brother Taj already talks about is that, yo, we have to um, um, make them enforce their own laws because this is why they took their oath to the Constitution. And if we don't make them uphold the Constitution, then really us doing trade, with um, allowing them to do trade in our borders, you know what I'm saying, would have been for not. You know, and that's is what, and that's what's going on. We got these jackasses running around thinking that they run something when the only thing they run is the corporate side of things. You know, we are the Americans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have to check them. Well, we have to check right. them with, with their right. own laws, like you said. Their own laws, right? Because they the one. Remember, we never took an oath to the Constitution. Hell, we're not even citizens. <laughs> right. Exactly. We are the we are the Aboriginal. Or, as I like to use, average, um, original um, um, inhabitants. Yeah, if you look under... Is it appropriate to use the word national? Can we say national? Yeah, natural. No, national. Can we say we're national? American yeah. nationals. Well, we can say that... Not yes. citizens, say but national. Right, we're natural, yes. national. Yeah. Yes, yeah. you can see that. Yes. yes. Okay. I mean, I have a court on the first. And real quick, uh, real it's quick, like Lee, just to, to, to impact on what you were just saying, if you look under the construction of statutes in your state, you will see how they're administrating us as corporations because under construction of statutes in all states, you find that the definition of a person has nothing to do with us. Right. If you look under the construction of statutes, mm -hmm. definitions of person, you will see in, in the state of Tennessee, our definition of person under construction of statute is an association, a firm, and a corporation. Right. So that in itself will let you know that that's how they're administering us as corporations when you go into a court. So that's one of the first things that you can throw right back at them is their own definitions of that person that's going into court, which is is legis. Right. That name that they putting on that docket, whether you a plaintiff defendant, well, mostly defendants, that name, all caps, is ENS Legis, E-N-S-L-G-I-S, Creature of the Law. It tells you right on right. point what it is. You right. throw that back at them, okay, you shut it down. Game over. Right. Well, Dr. Arlene, I have a court case coming up on the 1st of March. That's mm -hmm. about indigenous. Uh, I have a um, nationality and all that. How would I deal with that? You would send in, well, send in a copy of your nationality documents to the court, certified mail return receipt. Also send in along with that, with that a notice of restricted appearance that you only bear under threat of arrest and coercion. And then also send in your countersuit. Challenge the jurisdiction if you would defend it. Right. And appear special. Right. 
Mm-hmm. Notice the special appearance. Always the appears special. Appearance. Right. Right. But you still got to file that county suit pursuant to federal rule of uh, civil procedure, Rule 15. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you file, okay. but here, here, here it is. Here's the thing, though, to that counter, though. If you file a counter, then you confer jurisdiction. I would, me personally, I would not file a counter until after you challenge the jurisdiction of a court. Because remember, anytime you appear as a defendant, if you if you appear and do not challenge the jurisdiction at first instance, you confer jurisdiction. You should never, ever, as a defendant, confer jurisdiction to the court. That means no. you never appear, only you appear special. That's no, you, no, you will not consent. Right, and that's why we that's right. why we say restricted appearance, which is um, saying special appearance. Um, so you send in a notice of special appearance, and you definitely want that. Um, you want a copy of your um, nationality, and you want to send that certified mail return receipt. Make sure you send it to the clerk of court. Make sure you have your um, the so-called court docket number that they have given or associated with you is on the documentation so that the clerk can put it into your documentation. What is going to be said is that you also need to give notice to the, to the so-called DA or the so-called state. So um, you can give a note in which that states that um, notice can be given uh, from the clerk to the DA concerning that matter. And I always say for the record. Right. I say for the record. No. Right. So, so you want to make consent. sure mm-hmm, that and you want to benefit. That. Now, remember, on your special notice, all right, or on your restricted appearance, whichever name that you want to call it, um, you want to be able to say that you're only threat there under threat or arrest and coercion, that you do not give yeah. consent to the proceedings. And like the brother said, um, basically that you're challenging jurisdiction. Remember, we stated that in so-called um, court, which we don't even like to refer to that as um, the administrative bankruptcy process, you want to make sure that you state that they do not have persona and that they do not have subject matter. Subject matter, exactly. <laughs> and if the judge asks you, um, you know, because the judge is going to ask you, try to be slick. Well, where do you live? I live in my body. Right. What he's trying to, what he's trying to make you to say is associate you. Um, living at an address, but of course, if you leave the home, the damn house don't die. So or you, you live in the or house. you live on the land or the soil. Right, right. You know, and so that's his whole trick is to get you to associate with a fictitious um, um, environment. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if he asks you that, of course, you say you live in your body because your soul is inside of you, and the real self is the soul. The body is just the vessel. That's your house. Remember, the body is the temple of God. You know, so um, he'll look at you like, okay, you passed test one. <laughs> you know, if I ask you, well, you have a, um, a state ID, and you can say, well, that's, in, that's for commerce, um, but that doesn't supersede my rights. Show me contract of where I waive up my rights. Mm-hmm. How do you earn a living? How do you earn a living? Right. Because right. on your state ID, you all have all rights preserved right. under your exactly. name, but without prejudice or dishonor under right. your name. Exactly. You can say that also. That you have. So, I mean, in so many ways, right, how do you earn your living? You know what I'm saying? Um, you That's mean, the question I was asked last Friday in court. Right, right, right. <laughs> That's one of the um, qu- Right. On your honor, I'm living to earn. <laughs> Whoa. You say, how would you say that? What would you say? Tell them honestly. Because yeah. how do you earn your living? Huh? That's an oxymoron. I'm living to earn. Mm. <laughs> That's a, I like that. Hey, on your like honor, you, know, you mean what have I earned? 
you know, or they might ask you, where were you born um, from your mother's womb? <laughs> my wife always say, from my mother's mm-hmm. sakat. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. True yeah. that. So these are these are the trickeries that they would like to try to use in court in order to try to establish jurisdiction. But once you answer these particular questions, um, they know that you're not playing with them. And um, Your Honor, please, um, based on the uh, Dress Scott case, I'm not a citizen, nor will I ever be. Mm-hmm. The 14th Amendment right. does not apply in this matter. Right. Because it was never fully ratified. I'm not a taxpayer. Right, right, right. So this is this is what you will um some of the things that you would like to say in your T D C or your threat to arrest and coercion, uh slash notice of special appearance or restricted appearance. Um, so you know, just stick you know, stick to the to those you know, those types of things and they can't move they can't move you. Right. You know, when you and when you put it into the record, even though you put it into the record, always take a court reporter and put it on the record because those devils are slick down there because just because you put it into the record doesn't necessarily mean it's on the record because they can do some shiesty stuff with it. But if you get a court reporter and then put it on the record, it ain't going nowhere. No, most of the time they don't put it on the record. Some judges don't allow your court reporter in the courtroom. Some no, judges don't allow you to put it on the record. But that shows you how raggedy they run their system. They yeah, don't put I'm, it on the record. But it's, up, but it's up to you to, to put it on the record. Put it on the record anyway. That's right. That's so, right. Because most of the time they don't. Exactly. And like I say, that shows you how raggedy, raggedy they run their system. You know. Exactly. But it's Judge up to her, us to put it on the record. Her, I stood up in front of the judge, and the first thing I told him, I said, "Your uh, judge, for the record, I like to make the statement that I'm here on a special appearance." And he looked at me and said, "Are you paying for? Are, did you make arrangements to pay for that court reporter?" I said, "That's my court reporter." He's, he sat back in his chair, neck turned red, and said, "Oh, okay, you, you can continue mm. because he wasn't <laughs> because." I'm pro mm-hmm. se. He wasn't even expecting me to come in there with a court reporter. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So now he all off balance when he seen that everything was coming out of my mouth was on the record. Right. Yeah. And I'm gonna get that. Uh, uh, uh I'm gonna share that with you, brothers, on that uh, hearing. Uh, when I get the transcripts back, which I have next week. And show you exactly uh, how a judge reacts uh, when you come in there and challenge jurisdiction with a court reporter. Mm. Y'all ain't gonna believe the words that was coming out of his mouth. <laughs> like you said, court, court reporter or court reporter? Court, court reporter. Reporter. Okay. Be sure to polish up that counterclaim, brother. Make them pay for your time. Yeah. Yeah. Carlos, I don't know. Uh, I'm not right now. I'm gonna wait for him to go ahead and rule on it on a default. I'm not gonna file anything because, like I said, in, in the state of Tennessee, once you challenge the jurisdiction and jurisdiction hasn't been established, you can't file. You can't file anything else in court because you will confer jurisdiction. At that point, you don't do anything because. What the judge does at that point is void ab initio. So it don't matter what he does. It's automatic void. All you got to do is wait for the, mm-hmm. for the default because at the at my motion to di- dismiss hearing, I challenged jurisdiction. He was not able, the court wasn't able to establish. He told me, oh, I don't answer questions. I, I straight up asked him before I, before I proceed, I need to know the nature and cause of this action. And I need to know, are we in a, uh, is this a uh, statutory court? Is this a common law court? He looked at me and said, oh, I don't answer questions. I said, let the record show that the judge refused to answer questions, thus therefore uh, refused to establish jurisdiction. You see what I'm it saying? So I did. I went, in, went on ahead and continued. But at that same time, they never established jurisdiction. So. Once I got through, he denied my motion to dismiss. 
Can we get back to the class? Yo, y'all can build because um, class is over. So, hey, um, everybody can oh. relax and, and go over some things and, you know, the stories because all this information helps, you know, others in their cases and in, in their information. Uh, Dr. I mean, um was you going to give us the steps to the, uh, to the authenticate in your birth certificate? Yes. I'm going to send okay. that off. All right, thanks. Well, uh, you got a sample? Do you have a sample of one already authenticated already? No. no. Okay, I, I got a copy of one. If it, I already got mine authenticated. If anybody just wants to look at it and see what it is looking like, how to get it done. Perfect. Perfect. Send it. Um, you can send it to me, and I can send it to everybody. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Along with the steps, I'm cool. I walked. Okay. Uh, I had to. I had mine walk through. I had just some brothers up in D.C. I sent mine to, and they just walked mine on through and, and uh, sent it to me. Okay. That's the best way. That's the best way. I I don't like sending stuff in. I like. I like to. I like them to be personally hand handed to them. Uh, he took mine in. Uh, uh, John Kerry signed it, and uh, he sent it on to me. All right. All right. All right. Brother Alim, yeah. In regards to what the brother was mentioning about jurisdiction, um, like from some of the readings I've done, like no judge can prove any jurisdiction whatsoever over anybody right. because they don't have like That's dominion. True. Right. That's true. Exactly right. <laughs> That's why you need to kill up that counterclaim. That's why you need to kill up that counterclaim, brother. Yeah. I mean, yeah. They got to pay, right? When you catch them. Damn right. Yeah, yeah counterclaim. If you do a counterclaim, do it. You can do a counterclaim in uh, in uh, independent counterclaim, can't you, uh, Doctor Lee? Yes. Yes. As well yeah. as also. Um, in some courts, like the brother said, it might be beneficial in order to wait, in order to see um, if they can prove jurisdiction. Right. Um, we're going to court where we use the counter um, claim or counter suit right off the bat, and they just went on ahead and dismissed the, um, you know, the charges. Oh, okay, okay. You know, so, so it depends on where you are, um, you know, and the procedure. How you know, so. Mm-hmm. So many but, ways to skin a cat, though, in this jurisdiction process, though. So. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So many ways to skin a cat. Exactly. Hey, and to the brother in Tennessee, I'm going to have to get your number. I'm in Tennessee. I'm in uh, Tennessee, too. Oh, uh, yeah. You need to holler at me, man. I'm in the court. I'm in the, uh, you know, we got the equity court here in Tennessee, man. And I've been in, I, oh, I, 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 I haven't lost one case in a court of equity yet. And oh. I've been in there dozen of times. Don't lose. Outstanding. Yeah, man. I'm going to have to get your what number. Part of, what, part of Tennessee, what part of Tennessee you in? I'm in Nashville. Yeah, I'm in Nashville, too. Okay. Oh, you in Nashville? Yep. Okay, yeah, brother. We got to hook up there. Yeah, for sure. Hey, yeah, Y'all probably next door neighbors. neighbors. I'm <laughs> shutting them down, man. Yeah, hey, that'd be crazy. I'm shutting them down, bro. Outstanding, yeah, brother. Follow suit. Excellent. Yeah. You need to follow suit. Yes, sir. What, what's your number? 615-310-2099. Okay. And what's your appellation? Moravi L. Bay. Two M's. You are. Moravi Morabi. Okay, I'm gonna hit you right now. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I'm about to say I, I got your number down. Hey, Morabi, if you have any questions, bro. Hey, hey, can you repeat that number? I'm in, hey, can you repeat that number? I'm in South Carolina. It's Joe Lamar Bay. I'm on six one six one five six one five three one zero two zero nine nine. South Carolina, I believe y'all got a court of equity too, don't you? Yeah, I, I hadn't got into that point yet. I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to um, file my documents right now. I think I'm gonna have to go next door to Cherokee County whenever I can get a chance. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm in Spartanburg. All right, my good boys, this is Brother Fahim with an L. I've got to sign off. I've got to pay a water bill, so. <laughs> hey, this is Jacob Blue, man. You got to. Tell me, Jacob, what? Tell me, Jacob Blue. I do that. I do that, boy. <laughs> I'm the 31, 31, 31, 13, my brother. I, I, I do just that, that, boy. I'll tell you my promissory note, man. <laughs> Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. public I debt. I got to go too, y'all. So I'm gonna say, um, hey, I take right. to each myself. All right. Yeah. I'll take hey, hi, I'll hi, watch hi, 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 All right, peace, 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 peace